Hello everyone, uh, this is Dr. Ross and Buff Carlin with another program, uh, Greater Than Higher Power. And today I want to talk about uh, uh, a subject I'm calling No Man Cares for My Soul. Sometimes we feel like nobody cares, nobody understands what we're going through. And I want to uh, share about that. Now, especially, you know, there's people, with all, there's all kinds of problems in the world that people have. No matter what the problem is, you know, if it's addiction problem or if it's a mental health problem or a family or some kind of circumstance, employment, financial problem, whatever it may be, even a political problem, I'm telling you, God can intervene. He does care for us. He loves us. So anyways, I uh, want to share with you. I did write a book. If you're interested, I have it right here. It's called greater than a higher power and the subtitle is addiction recovery yesterday today and forever which you can get at amazon books all right and so if you want to get that you can do it but i basically talk about you know i give my own testimony for one chapter but i talk about what the bible talks says about addiction and principles how to overcome be victorious and a whole lot of other things and i uh, share from secular studies how Jesus Christ, it, the majority of people in recovery from especially alcohol and drug addiction, do it because they give their life to Jesus Christ. All right. So if you're interested, you can get that at Amazon Books. Uh, okay, I want to share with you. I want to start off and just uh, share uh, uh, some scriptures with you. And uh, from actually... Uh, Psalms 142, and I'm going to read here. I have the New King James translation. And basically says this. Psalms 142 has seven verses to it. All right. David, this is a Psalm of David uh, that he prayed when he was in a cave. All right. He was in a cave. All right. He says, I cried out. I cry out to the Lord with my voice. With my voice to the Lord, I make my supplication. So it's good to cry out to the Lord. You know, the Bible does say, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. All right. I cry out to the Lord with my voice. With my voice to the Lord, I make my supplication. I pour out my complaint before him and I declare to him my trouble. Okay. This is my complaint. And, and I, God, this is my trouble. It's good to, to, Cry out to the Lord and, and, and explain to him, you know, declare to him what your trouble is because he's a very present help in the time of trouble. And in verse three, it says, I guess I'll just read it and then I'll do the I'll comment on these verses. Verse three, then uh, Psalm 142, when my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then uh, you knew my path in the way in which I walk. They have secretly set a snare for me. Look on my right hand and see. For there is no one who acknowledges me. Refuge has failed me. No one cares for my soul. I cried out to you, O Lord. I said, you are my refuge, my fortress in the land of the living. Attend to my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me uh, from my persecutors for they are stronger than I. Bring my soul out of prison that I may praise your name. The righteous shall surround me, for you shall deal bountifully with me. All right, those are the seven verses. So he cried unto the Lord. He was going through some troubles. He was in a cave. It might have been the time when he was hiding out, probably when he was hiding out when King Saul and the uh, and, and King Saul's army of Israelites were coming, looking for David to kill him. All right. And so he poured out his complaint, cried out to the Lord. And it says in verse three, when my spirit was overwhelmed within me. And there was your spirit like fainted. Like this is just too much. You know, it's, it's like sometimes we feel like we can't handle this. When we feel overwhelmed, my spirit, you know, you know when we talk about some people have like a broken spirit or a wounded spirit, it's like my spirit was overwhelmed. But it says when that happened, then you knew my past. So God knows what we're going through. 
He knows what we're going through, whatever we may be battling against, what's coming against us, what's persecuting us. He might know. I mean, in the day of this, uh, the political divide and all this cancel culture stuff and people were people against other people, which I don't like that stuff at all. We need to be loving and peaceful and try to be understanding. But anyways, uh, when my spirit was overwhelmed with, within me, you knew my path. God knows our path. He knows where we're at. He knows what we're going through. He knows the problems. You know, there's an old, uh, what they call it, they call it uh, a Negro spiritual. It says, nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Nobody knows like Jesus. Nobody knows. And we all have unique situations. I mean, there were times where it's like I couldn't break free from alcohol and drugs and the other, some of the other things I was doing, I just seemed like I just couldn't do it on my own strength or my own power. I was overwhelmed, but thank God he set me free. But when my spirit was overwhelmed, and we've all felt that way, and if you feel like your spirit's overwhelmed, like, wow, I, you know, I don't know if I can handle all this, you know? Of course, the you know, if you know the Bible, it says in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, there's there's no temptation overtaking us, but since it's common to man, that God will provide a way of escape. He will do that. But sometimes it just seems overwhelming, like, goodness sakes, when's this going to let up? When's this going to change? Sometimes just trouble after trouble, problem after problem, and we can go through those situations. But I'm here to tell you that God loves you, and he can hear your prayers, hear your cries, especially if you turn your life over to him. He will uh, set you free. He'll deliver you. He'll come through with his strong arm and his love. He will do it. So David said, when my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then you knew my path. God knows our path. He knows what we're going through. It is not, you know, it's, it's not, it's not like, well, he doesn't know. God's afar off somewhere. I want to tell you, he knows what you're going through and he loves you and he's going to give you victory. That's the way God is. All right, he says, in the way which I walk, they have secretly laid a snare for me. So people would try to lay snares and try to trap us and just, you know, uh, there, there are people who just do those kind of things. They speak against other people and some people are by, behind the scenes pulling strings like a puppet or something, right? But it says, that, so there are people who, uh, God knows what's happening even when people are kind of setting traps for us. In verse four, look on my right hand and see, for there is no one who acknowledges me. She's like, hey, you know, and you've heard some people say, this is my right hand man and all that stuff. You know, but there was no one. He didn't have a right hand man. He didn't have anybody, you know, who he says, there's no one who acknowledged me. And there are sometimes have you ever been forsaken by people you thought were friends or family members who would stick with you, uh, you know, through things? But sometimes they forsake us. Sometimes family members turn on us, you know. And believe me, I have my own private counseling practice. I have e-care counseling. Uh, I happen to be a licensed clinical mental health counselor, supervisor, and also a licensed clinical addiction specialist. And uh, I hear all kinds of situations and sometimes you know, families turn on other family members and, and it's painful. It's very painful. So some people said it secretly set a snare for me. Look on my right hand. There's nobody there. You'd think they'd be there to be supportive, but they aren't sometimes for there is no one who acknowledges me. Then he says, refuge has failed me. Like I'm going to go hide, get away. He's in a cave. He says, refuge has failed me. Sometimes you can, you can try to seek refuge somewhere, but it just doesn't work. And our spirit's still low, uh, overwhelming us, you know? And then he says this, and that's what I'm kind of titling my messages okay, because of what David was crying out at that time. No one cares for my soul. And there are times where it seems like nobody really cares. Now, there might be some people that do care, but sometimes if we're all depressed, our spirit's overwhelmed, you know, sometimes we don't think about it and realize that somebody else, that people are for us. But no one cares for my soul. I'm here to tell you 
there's a lot of people, you know, some people that don't care, but there's probably some people who care about your soul. God loves you. He loves you and he does care for you and he loves you very much. God is love and he knows what you're going through and he will deliver you if you will call upon him and invite him to do that and trust him. He will work things out. He can bring it to you whatever your troubles are, whatever your problems are. He will do it. All right, so no man cares for him. And I felt that way at times, so nobody seems like nobody cares. You know, I've been I remember one of the last times I went to jail, I went to jail a lot of times in my life in the past before I knew Christ. But <laughs> I remember the last time I was there, my father had died, and he used to be a lawyer and the mayor of our city that I grew up in. <laughs> and he was gone, and my mother used to bail me out of jail. You know, you know, I was, you know, I, I wasn't a juvenile anymore. I was 18. That she would bail me out of jail. But you know what? The last time I went to jail, I mean, she'd have to sign up over the house or whatever is uh, collateral or whatever they call it back then as a bond. And you know what? She said, "No, I'm not bailing you out this time." I got mad, you know, it's, it's true. I really wish I hadn't have done it, but I, I, I cussed her out. I was so angry at her for, and she's left me there in jail. <laughs> and so I felt like, well, she didn't care anymore. But actually it's one of the best things she ever did for me. Helped me to realize, you know, and she, she didn't want to be uh, enabling me anymore. All right, I had to, had to take responsibility for my own life. All right, put on my reading glasses here. But David said, no man cares for my soul. But he says, I cried to you, O Lord. And I says, you are my refuge. You know, the other refuge, he said, didn't work, didn't help. But God can be our refuge. And he works. He helps us. He protects us. And he says, and my portion, talk about God. You are my refuge and my portion in the land of the living. God is our portion. And he'll... Uh, provide for us, meet our needs, and help us out. So in verse 6, he says, Attend to my cry, for I am brought very low. Notice he said, not just low, very low. I'm talking about really depressed, all right? Despondent. I am brought very low, very, very low. And he says, deliver me. So we're what? If you're low right now, if you're really depressed or despondent about something, I want to encourage you to trust God and have hope in your heart and believe that God's going to work it out. He can set you free from what, all, whatever kind of bondage, whatever kind of problem you're going through. God can work things out. And I preached a week or two ago about pulling us out of miry clay and out of pits and stuff like that. God can do it. All right. So tend to my cry for I'm brought very low. God can do it. Deliver me from my persecutors. So some people persecute us, speak against us, for they are stronger than I. They're stronger than me. You know, we can have odds wave against us. Even where it says, the last verse here, seven, bring my soul out of prison that I may praise your name. Sometimes our souls can be in prison. You know, that's supposed to be, soul supposed to represent our mind, will, and intellect. Our soul, bring my soul out of prison. And there are some people, you know, and I, you know, I write in my book, I wrote a whole chapter. I did, I did prison ministry for seven years in a lot of prisons. And there are some people, you know, that behind the walls, behind prison bars, who are free because they received Christ. They're free in their hearts and their minds and their spirits. All right. However, they're in their souls, they're free. But there are people walking outside, not behind prison bars or walls, whose souls are in prison. You know, they're, they've got problems and they focus on those things. And it's, it's like they, they're locked up in their minds. So bring my soul out of prison, I may praise your name. It's good to learn to praise God. Praise God, he will deliver us. And God inhabits the praises of his people and he'll do it for us. It says the righteous shall surround me. So it ends up, he's saying the righteous people, the good people, people of God, good people are going to surround us. And you know, one of the things in, about overcoming addiction problems and even other problems 
is change your people, places, and things. All right? But find, hang around with some good people. All right? For you shall deal bountifully with me. So he recognized, he ends this uh, psalm in faith. Even though he's having trouble and brought very low and all that stuff and feels like nobody cares, he said, you shall be able to deal bountifully with me. God, you're going to deal great with me. And he had hope. And I encourage you to have hope and trust the Lord to do good things in your heart and life. All right. So that is that. Now, I, I got some other scriptures here I want to share with you. Philippians chapter 2, verse 4 says, let each of you look not only to, to his own interest, but also to the interests of others. So we're supposed to be to care and concern, be concerned about other people. That's a great thing to do. In John chapter 13, verse uh, 34 and 35, Jesus said this, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. Uh, you also are to love one another. Just as I love you, you're also supposed to love one another. Uh, by this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. And when we love somebody else, we love for one another, we help, we care about them, we're concerned, and we do what we can to help them. All right. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 9 through 10, it says, it says let us not grow weary of doing well. For in due season, we will reap if we do not give up. Don't give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone. And that do good, to me, includes caring for them. Especially to those who are of the household of God. So God likes that. And Galatians chapter 6, verse 2, uh, you know, says, Bear one another's burdens, so fulfill the, the law of Christ. Let's help each other out. You know, I like helping people. God does good things. You know, even, you know, at one day in Matthew chapter 25, it, there's a story about what's called uh, the sheep and the goats. <laughs> you know, it's, it's basically saying God, uh, uh, there's a time of judgment in Matthew chapter 25. And Jesus um uh, is going to judge between how people are. And he calls some people like sheep and some people like goats. And in Matthew chapter 25, verse 31 through 46, Jesus said, when the Son of Man, that's him, comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd shepherd separates the sheep from the goats and he will place the sheep on his right hand but the goats on the left then the king will say to those on his right hand come you who are blessed by my father inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world for i was hungry and you gave me food i was thirsty and you gave me drink i was a stranger and you welcomed me and then they're going to say well when did we see you that way he said, when you, you know, when you saw the least of these brothers, when you visited them in prison or whatever they went through, he says, when you did it to, to the least, it's the same as doing it unto me. And so the Lord wants us to care, you know, for other people. If we say we care about God, we say we love God, then let's care for his people and other people who are going through situations. So uh, that's part of what happens. You know, we need to welcome strangers to f feed people clothe them. If you read that whole chapter, you'll see that in Matthew 25. So there are some good things to do. And uh, Proverbs chapter 19, verse 17, it says, whoever is generous to the poor lends to the Lord and he will repay him for his deed. God, when we give, when we're generous to the poor, when we give to the poor, God it's like lending to the Lord. The Lord's going to take care of us. And I, he, to me, he's the one that just kind of multiplies it back. All right. I love to give. My wife and I love to give. Yes, we pay tithes and offerings. And we, we give to people who are poor, people going through in different ways. We do it. And I don't want to tell you how much, but, you know, we do give away. And we love to bless. 
We love to bless people. See, we like to help people. We like to care for others in need. And I think it's great to be able to do that. We give the orphanages all kinds of different ministries. And, you know, we love to do that. And I hope you like to uh, care for others also. In First Peter chapter 5, verse 7, it says we're supposed to cast all of our anxieties, right, our cares on the Lord because he cares for you. So we cast our anxieties on God because he cares for us. He does care for us. David felt like no man cares for my soul, but the Lord does. And again, John 15, 12, this is come my commandment, Jesus said, that you love one another as I have loved you. Love and love is caring and giving. And I, I like this verse. You know, the apostle Paul, he started off his name Saul and God changed his name to Paul. Well, when he had experience with Christ, well, he, God put it in his heart and sent him around as like, kind of like a missionary. He's an, he became the apostle Paul. And he went, he traveled around, and he started churches. He preached the gospel in all kinds of places, all different cities and villages. He, he did that. All right. And when he went, he loved the people. He cared. I mean, he got, if you read the scriptures, I mean, Paul was beaten and left shipwrecked, and, you know, <laughs> a bunch of times. A bunch of things happened to him. I mean, he really was went through it. All right. But he survived, but he kept going and he kept going and reaching more people. Why? Because he cared about him, because he loved him. And the Apostle Paul, uh, who started the church in Corinth, he wrote them a couple letters. And, and when 2 Corinthians, the second letter he wrote to him, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 16, he talks, he uh, said this to them. But thanks be to God who puts the same earnest care for you into the heart of Titus. Of course, at the beginning of that chapter in there, he talks about, you know, he went there and showed care, showed love to these people. But he writes them and says, thanks be to God that he put that same, not just a little bit of care, earnest care into the heart uh, of Titus for you. God can raise up people who have care and love, earnest care for us and will bless us. And I'm so glad there's been people throughout my life who as God has kind of done that, put earnest care and they've just for me and they've blessed me and helped me and strengthened me and some have mentored me and discipled me. And I thank God for that. And I believe God can raise up people to minister to you also. All right. So God can put earnest care, and I hope you have earnest care in your heart. Well, also, uh, I want to read 2 Corinthians chapter 1, just verse 3 and 4. Uh, and see what this says. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the Father of all comfort, who comforts us in our affliction. Oh, remember, uh, David was going through problems, troubles, afflictions. He says, who comforts us in our affliction so that, oh, he does it for a purpose, so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction, you know, with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. So it says this, basically God is merciful. He's God of all comfort. He comforts us in our affliction so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction. Notice that. We can care for people, comfort them. Comfort's one form of caring, isn't it? All right? So able to comfort those in any affliction, not just certain kinds of affliction. You know, I love to help people get free from addictions. You know, I'm a, I am ai help people with gambling addictions and things like that. But it says, because we receive comfort, God ministers to us. He cares for us. He loves us. And then we're able to comfort those who are in any affliction, no matter what kind they're in. And I, whatever you are going through right now, God is able 
to care for you or send some people to care for you, to minister to you, to bless you, to send his angels. I mean, he can just do it. And and we can, and we can learn, and we can comfort those who are in any affliction. And I guess I'm trying to do that right now. It says, with the same comfort uh, in which we ourselves are comforted by God. I'm telling you, I have been through some rough, tough things. I've been like the like uh, David felt like nobody cared. I've been down, you know, very brought very low as it says in Psalms 142. But I am here to tell you that God has brought me out of it. He has comforted me by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is also referred to in the Bible as a comforter. And he has comforted me. And because of that, I can say with you boldly and with compassion that God loves you and that God is going to minister to you even right now, minister to you and give you peace and joy and help you and have victory in your life. All right. I, one more portion of scripture I want to read to you before I pray with you here in closing. This is from Luke chapter 10, verse 29 through 37. And I guess, you know what? I'm not going to take time to read it because it might take too long. But this is the story uh, of the Good Samaritan. In John chapter 10, verse 29 through 37. And basically, he talks about how there was a, there was a man who got uh, was going down to Jericho and he got attacked by robbers. He was stripped and beaten of his, beaten, take, his clothes were taken away. He's, he was left half dead. And then there was a, a priest and a, a Levite, some other people who saw him, but they passed on the other side and didn't help. They didn't really care, did they? But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was and saw him and took pity on him. And he went to him and he bandaged up his wounds, poured in oil and wine. And then he put the man on his own donkey. You know, they had donkeys then, horses and stuff, not, you know, like cars and trucks. And gave them, uh, anyways, and took care of him. It says, then he put the man on his donkey brought him to him in, so took him to the Holiday Inn or whatever they had back then, and took care of him. He took care of him, this Samaritan, and thank God he did. And then uh, the next day, he took out some money and gave it to the innkeeper and said, look, when I uh, take care, care of it's any extra expense, when I come back this way, I'll pay you some more. And so who cared? Jesus said, well, who cared for this person? It's the Samaritan. So, God wants us to be caring, loving people. God is a good God and he loves us. and He cares for you. And whatever you're going through right now, the Lord loves you. And the Lord can comfort you, you know, put care into people's hearts for you. It's in God's heart. He loves you. And he is going to give you victory. So right now, I want to pray for you. And if you don't know Jesus, I encourage you to invite Jesus Christ into your heart, ask him to forgive you of your sins that come into your heart. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, I pray for everybody listening to me right now that you minister to them, that you would comfort them, but you would help them to know that maybe there's some people feel like nobody cares, but let them know you care, I care, other people care, and help them to go through life with victory and comfort. In Jesus' name, God bless you. See you next week.